all objects, big and small, are attracted to each other by the force of gravity. This force increases with mass and decreases with distance, as shown in this equation created by Isaac Newton. Okay, so the current model of physics doesn't consider gravity a force, but I'm not going to open that can of worms right now. This attraction caused a cloud of space dust to collapse and form our solar system. But a question does arise. If all of this dust is attracted together, why are there planets? Why didn't all of the dust collapse into one big star? Well, it turns out that most of the mass in the solar system did end up in the sun, about 99.8% according to NASA. But to give you a better idea of how the planets formed, I think we need to do a simulation. I wrote this program and it's actually pretty simple. It just takes a very long time to run because there's no optimization. We begin with a set of 400 randomly placed objects in 2D space. Then we give each of them a random velocity. I added a slight bias to the velocities so the objects would tend to spin clockwise. This approximates the aftermath of a spinning star which exploded. This will help with the formation of planets but it's not necessarily required. Now we'll introduce four simple laws of physics to our simulation. Rule number one, velocity is change in position. This rule is super simple. We just calculate the change in position by multiplying the velocity by the change in time. If we run the simulation, we see exactly what we'd expect. Points flying off in random straight lines. Rule number two, gravity creates acceleration. This one's a bit more complicated in the code because we have to calculate the gravity produced by each object on each object but at its heart, it's just a modified version of the gravity equation. We know that force equals mass times acceleration, so acceleration must equal force divided by mass. That means we can just divide out the mass of the body we're looking at and only use the mass of the body it's being attracted to. And by the way, I didn't actually use the right constant of g in my simulation, I just picked a random number that made the force of gravity look right. Rule number three, objects are sticky. Okay, so maybe that's not a law of physics, but the conservation of momentum is, and this will make our simulation a lot more simple. I set it up so when objects get too close together, they will be combined into a single larger object. The new object is given a velocity that conserves the momentum of the original objects. This is really just a weighted average of their velocities. And rule number four, acceleration is change in velocity. This is just like rule one, except now we're changing velocity by multiplying the acceleration by time. So now we have a working simulation, but you should know the dots aren't actually to scale, so sometimes objects will look like they should hit each other, but they don't actually merge together. With that out of the way, let's run the simulation and see what we get. At first, the dots spread out, just like they did without gravity, but over time, they start to gather into larger masses in the center of the cloud. These masses also smash together, and eventually they form a large star at the center of the solar system. At this point, the system is still young, so there's a lot of rogue asteroids, but you can see that some planets are starting to form in stable orbits. And as time goes on, the sun and planets clean up most of the smaller objects, leaving us with a couple of planets in stable orbits. Now, just to have some fun, I decided to rerun the simulation with exactly the same initial conditions, except I removed five random objects. This will show us the stability of the simulation. Does it need a very particular set of conditions to produce planets? Will the butterfly effect destroy our solar system? Let's find out. Again, the system starts off chaotic, until another large sun begins to form in the center. But this medium-sized object has been launched away from the sun. It doesn't seem that important right now, but it will come into play later. Another small object actually catches a moon, but they aren't quite moving fast enough to stay in orbit, and they end up falling into the sun. By now that medium-sized object has grown, and it's falling back towards the sun. It looks like it's going to impact, but it just barely makes it out the other side. It turns out that this massive planet ends up in a fairly stable elliptical orbit around the sun. And by the end of the simulation, it's the larger of two bodies in stable orbits. It's crazy how removing five objects results in such a different solar system. The original simulation resulted in two small objects orbiting close to the sun, like warm rocky planets. But the new simulation produced a massive planet like Jupiter in an elliptical orbit that flew right by the sun. 
So, to compare how these systems developed, I overlaid the videos on top of each other. These gray spots are the objects that I removed. You might need to turn your resolution up if you can't see them. Now, let's run the simulations and see how they evolve. After one second, most of the black objects have diverged into two gray objects. That means that this slight change in the initial conditions has completely changed the formation process. By two seconds, there's basically no similarity between the simulations. And it's not until six seconds that we start to see similar behavior again, as the suns start to form in roughly the same area. The larger sun is from the second simulation, but the first sun is starting to catch up. As time goes on, order appears to arise from the chaos. We started with two systems that were almost identical. If I hadn't overlaid them, you probably couldn't tell them apart. But they very quickly diverged. Now they are reconverging, so they must have been produced by a similar process. In both simulations, the planets orbit clockwise because of that initial spin I added to the dust cloud. And the average velocity of the cloud results in both systems slowly drifting down and to the right. The particulars of these solar systems are very different from a human perspective but the average angular momentum and linear momentum are mostly unaffected by the small change in initial conditions. This type of behavior is something we see a lot in science. We struggle to predict the weather more than a few days ahead of time because we don't know enough about the current conditions. Much like this simulation, where removing a few objects completely changed the outcome, small changes in the current weather condition will result in completely different outcomes after only a short time. But we can still make some generalizations about the future. In my simulation, while the particulars were different, both models were moving and spinning in the same direction. So, to continue the weather analogy, this is more like climate science, which can't predict the exact temperature it will be on this day two years from now. But it can give a pretty reasonable estimate of the average temperature during that entire year. Anyway, hopefully watching these simulations gave you a little bit of insight into how planets form from a spinning cloud of dust. And it showed you how chaotic systems develop where exact predictions are basically impossible, but we can still make some generalizations. This was a pretty quick video, but there's plenty of science content on my channel already, and there's still more to come. I'm Gon Hathi, and I'll see you in the next video.